Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome back to my page, Money Making Juggernaut. I'm your host, Eric Richardson. Today, we have a great video in store. I am going to go over the next steps that you do once you have somebody that has verbally agreed to allow you to assist them on filing a claim for surplus funds, all right? Before we get into that, guys, make sure you guys go ahead and hit the like, hit the subscribe button. You guys know I'm coming out with content for you guys just to give you little tips and tricks on how you can dominate in this industry, all right, guys? So for starters, once you verbally have somebody committed to you moving forward with your services on helping them recover the surplus funds, this is a huge accomplishment, okay? But moving forward, you have to be very precise with the steps that I'm going to inform you on, okay? First thing that you must do, all right, once they have verbally agreed is you are going to send them an email with proof, okay? Now you might ask, well, what am I gonna send for proof? There's many ways that you can send proof that somebody's owed these funds, that they're entitled to these things, all right? The first thing is gonna be the notice of surplus funds letter. Now keep in mind, not every county is gonna have this letter, okay? Typically it's a, um, a letter that's gonna have the county's name at the top, it's gonna give you a state statute regarding surplus funds in that state, it's gonna say that they're entitled the certain dollar amount, it might give the parcel number on the property, maybe a case number that is assigned to it, maybe a certificate number, and also an address. Now this is going to be sent out to all individuals that they believe are entitled to surplus. This is going to be owners, this is gonna be potential heirs, this is gonna be lien holders, if any, but they should be receiving this letter. Now this letter, of course, is sent out to addresses that are getting return mail. So this is a great item that you can send as proof, all right? Another thing that you can send as proof is a surplus funds list, okay, an excess proceeds list directly from the county. What you want to do is highlight their name on that list and send it over to them, okay? That's great proof. Another option is going to be the auction calendar showing that the property actually sold for a higher amount. So if you can get that final sale result and you can take a screenshot of that and show them what the opening bid, final sale amount, and then explain how this leads to a surplus, that is great proof right there, all right? So those are pretty much three ways that you're gonna send proof. It's gonna be a letter, it's going to be a list, or it's gonna be the actual auction results, all right? So you're gonna attach that with your um, email, you're gonna send them the intro email with the agreement, you're gonna send that over. Now we need to get them signed up, all right? We have them verbally saying, yeah, let's go ahead and move forward. They've given you the email, now you send over proof, you send over the agreement form, they're ready to sign. And then now, once you have everything signed, once you have the paperwork, I definitely want you guys to confirm that these funds are still available at the county. Now you can do all of this work beforehand, but most likely if their name is listed on the surplus list, that means that the county is still holding these funds. Now of course, you could see an outdated list, um, you can also see a list that shows a claim back you know, multiple years ago. So it could be a possibility that these funds are no longer held at the county. They could have been as cheated to the state. Now every state is different with their protocols. Some states uh, actually take over the surplus and then other states it's just gonna be held as unclaimed state funds. Okay, so you definitely want to call, verify. Now once you have everything verified, now you're gonna move forward with submitting the claim, okay? Once you have verified with the county that those funds are still held there, now you must make sure that you understand how the county is going to accept claims, okay? Are they gonna accept claims via email, via fax, or do they require the originals mailed to them? You want to ask the county and find this out. Guys, we're not doing anything illegal. This is a business and you do work directly with the county when it comes to getting this claim process. So you want to ask them and make sure everything is outlined correctly so that you can have a successful payout. All right. Now, typically they're going to tell you, yes, you can email your claim in. So now you need to go through the protocols and see what is required. You guys require one form of identification. You guys require two. Do you guys require the deed document? Do you guys require the notice of surplus funds letter? Or is it plain and simple, we just fill out the claim form, then you guys are going to attach, you know, any type of payment instructions, limited power of attorney, things like that. But primarily, most counties will have a very simple claim form 
when it comes to tax deed overages, all right? Now, when it comes to mortgage foreclosures, typically there's gonna be a motion form, all right? And you're gonna use an attorney anyway for that. And this should be, they're gonna file the motion to disperse the surplus funds. So you definitely want to verify, all right? Now, once you understand, okay, this county needs these documents to have a successful payout, it's very simple. You get those documents completed, you get them notarized, and now you submit it exactly how the county wants it, and then you wait and you're gonna have a successful payout, okay? So guys, once you have somebody that has verbally agreed to allow you to move forward, make sure you follow these steps. This is great, this is you know awesome. You're gonna have a you know enjoyment that you're gonna move forward and actually help somebody, but you have to make sure you do things properly, all right? You can't just communicate with somebody on the phone. They say, okay, yeah, I'm ready to go, and then now, you don't even send them a nice professional email that breaks down everything that your company does, links to your company's website, attach the proper documentation. You know, you want everything to be streamlined and as simple as possible with these claims, okay? You shouldn't have to be going back and forth, having multiple um, occasions where you have to get documents notarized. Primarily, I wanna get that set up on one attempt. I want to have the notary set up. We're gonna get everything completed. Now your agreement form does not have to be notarized, so that typically can be e-signed. But once you have somebody that's locked in, ready to go, <clears throat> the county's claim form, majority of the time is gonna need um, a notarization, sometimes two witness signatures as well. We're gonna have that form. You're gonna have your limited power of attorney. You're gonna have your payment instructions. You might even have assignment of interest, but you wanna get all of that complete the first time, all right? And it is very important, guys, to call the county and verify that the funds are still there. Because sometimes there's cases where that individual has already filed a claim with another company or they've already gotten paid out and I don't understand what's going on, but for some reason they're still telling you that they wanna move forward with the claim. I've seen it happen, guys. So you want to verify or sometimes uh, a lien holder has already been paid out it's very important to verify that those funds are still there. And the reason why it's important after you get somebody that has verbally agreed or signed an agreement form is you cannot be calling the county every day verifying that those funds are there. Like, let's say for example, you get a list uh, from the county and you see 50 individuals that are entitled services. You're not gonna call the county and sit and go through each 50 individuals because you don't even have communication with the client. You don't even have them under contract yet. You should not be doing that. I do not recommend that. I recommend doing that after you have somebody that at least has verbally authorized you to assist them on filing the claim. When you communicate with the county, make sure you're professional, make sure you communicate and say that you have a client under contract, they have agreed to allow you to assist them on filing the claim, you just wanna verify that the forms are still there. Okay, great, and I just want to verify that you guys can accept this claim via email, fax, what's the protocol, okay and if they don't have the um, claim filing instructions online make sure that you contact the county and figure that out guys all right so if you want to know exactly how to operate this business as you guys know my course has over 47 chapters just for surplus funds alone all right and this is not just tax deed overages this is also mortgage foreclosures you're going to learn the ins and outs you're going to have all the documents on how to file a claim you're gonna get everything. You're gonna have videos on how to do research, how to do due diligence. You're gonna get videos on how to find leads. You're gonna have information on how you can contact these individuals, how you can skip trace, how you can properly communicate with somebody. You also will have email templates. Email templates to the claimant and then also email templates to the county, all right? So guys, take advantage of the code, take action. You will receive $100 off. I'm looking forward to helping you guys out. Thanks for watching.